once you marry your belief, you are going to marry your specific person. And I know, sounds pretty crazy or almost too good to be true, but there is a specific, and I mean very specific reason why this works in your reality. Because when we're changing states, the law of assumption states we need to feel and perceive and be someone who is with our specific person. And when you think about marriage, that's exactly what we're doing with our belief. We are marrying that belief so we can marry our specific person. And when you have that level of commitment to the belief that you and your specific person are already together, your reality has no choice but to bring it to you right here and right now. So I actually have a really, really cool treat for you today. I'm taking one of my workshops and I'm giving it to you for free right here and right now. It's an hour long and it has a 23 page workbook along with it. So if you did wanna download that, it is in the link in the description. And you may be asking, all right, Kyle, I know you love us, but why are you giving out this uh, free workshop for everyone? And it's because you guys know for the month of January, I was giving out a free, or I was meeting with four people and it turned out to be more than that. I was meeting with four people for free every single week to manifest their all of their specific people this January so they can spend all of 2024 together. And you guys absolutely blew up the responses. And I had so many responses, I literally wanted to choose every single one. So I thought, if I can't choose every single one, the next best, next best option is to help you in this way. So I'm gonna give you one of my workshops so you can also manifest and be on track to be with your specific person. Now, I still am meeting tomorrow, or yeah, tomorrow, so Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern time on YouTube, live for all of my members to go along with the, the group that I'm meeting with earlier in that day, the January group, and but the membership is like 10 bucks a month and I don't want you to feel like you have to get into that membership to make progress. So I thought I'm just gonna give everyone one of my workshops so that they can follow along, make progress. But if you did wanna join in that weekly Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern time live event, again, every single week, uh, just click in the description, become a member. Uh, sign up and then you can ask me any questions you want. Again, don't feel like you have to. You still get this whole workshop and I'm still making all my videos, but I, I definitely wanted to include this for anyone who didn't feel able, who wanted to kind of meet up with me, but wasn't able to this month. I am, because this was so much fun, in the future going to meet up with more people, probably like the same concept of picking a bunch of people to meet up in February. So if you did reach out to me, just know I'm gonna keep your email and I don't know, I did get a lot of emails. I'm gonna keep your email, basically reach out to you in February, but I'll, I'll make an announcement for that too if you did still want to meet up with me or maybe not because you're gonna join the member, you're gonna watch this workshop and you're gonna manifest your specific person. So I'm gonna use you as like a, a member to come on and just tell us your success story. How does that sound? Either way though, I'm excited for you to watch this workshop. It has had so many successes and I want you to see the success for yourself firsthand. Again, in the lecture that's gonna follow right after this video, you don't have to go anywhere, is gonna go over the entire workbook, but if you wanna download it, keep it for yourself. It is in the link in the description, so check it out. I'm so, so excited to see the progress that you're gonna make and I'm so excited to see you tomorrow, 1 p.m. Sunday, live on YouTube. So without any further ado, get ready to marry your belief and marry your specific person. So welcome guys to marry your belief, marry your specific person with me, Kyle August. We have a lot of really, really fun ideas today. And remember, if you have any questions at any given time, make sure to shoot them over in the chat. But Feel free to ask literally any question that you want at all, but I'll dive really, really into this concept that I think is extremely powerful when it comes to manifesting. And we'll just think about the idea of marriage, of marrying your belief. 
And if you guys are super into Neville Goddard, Joseph Murphy, it kind of rides along those individuals where they use this concept, obviously the law of assumption, of assuming as if what you want. Well, once you assume it, you see that happen outside of you. So basically, as you begin to marry this belief that you have with yourself and your specific person, you're going to see that end up basically being displayed outside of you. So whenever we want something or think of things that you feel are very permanent to you and think of how you would kind of, and I'll, I'll explain it more later in the process, but think about what it means to be married and think about things that are very permanent to you. And I think I was touching on this idea slightly in my TikTok live, but when you think of your name, when you think of your address, when you think of who you are, when you answer the question or finish the sentence of I am blank, whatever you put into there is an assumption that you are married to. You are fully devoted to all of your thoughts, beliefs, ideas, actions, outcomes, assumptions, all support and follow that marriage. And in the same way, and I'm kind of given a little bit essence of what we're going to talk about later, in the same way that you are fully devoted to who you're married to, whenever we marry a belief, it is something that we are fully devoted to, fully giving everything to, and we don't want to be unfaithful in that aspect, right? When if you were to think about your belief and your assumption on marrying the belief of your name, you'd say you're never unfaithful to that, right? You're always following through with it. You always say, this is my name, that's who I am, and everything follows along with it. If someone calls you a different name, then you feel weird, feel odd, feel different with that. But the same thing happens with you and your specific person. When we have the ultimate belief, desire, and assumption of being with our specific person, we have married them and everything's going to align with that. And that's kind of, it gives essence to, to the level of persistence and the level of devotion we want with our assumption. Because again, manifesting is feeling as if you already have what you want or more directly or more precisely the law of assumption feeling as if you're already married to your specific person, feeling as if you're already together, giving yourself that love and abundance, you are feeling you will receive in your end state to yourself right here and right now. So I'm going to get into it because there's something kind of less than positive that I want to talk about first and foremost because we need to get it out of the way. But it's something that we really, really do whenever we are attempting to change anything. And again, remember, you will get a copy of this whole workbook and then this entire lecture. So if at any point in time you want to go back to it, you absolutely can. And then remember too, if you have any questions, just put them in the chat and then kind of in between, I'll answer those or go through them or if I think it pertains exactly to what we're talking about at the given moment, then I'm just going to answer it directly. But I do have a time when I do, I wanna, I'm going to ask you guys questions. So just kind of be ready. Uh, well, it's just a couple questions. So don't like be, be ready. But I just want to hear your feedback on some of these ideas. And it really helps with getting ourselves into this belief of marrying your belief. Because I want you guys to manifest your specific person in the quickest way possible. And I know it sounds weird, but anytime I help someone manifest their specific person or manifest anything, I kind of take it personal. It's my manifestation as well as yours for you to get to your specific person. So always keep that in mind and always remember that every step of the way. So act. I'm your coach. This next 60 minutes, 100%. So ask me anything and totally dive into it as much as you possibly can. So the first thing that I want to kind of talk about is this aspect or idea of cold feet, right? So what, what does cold feet mean when it comes to marriage? Because we're trying to manifest our, or basically marry our belief. 
in this way, cold feet is that process where it's getting kind of closer to the time or some things are happening and we kind of, you know, worry or stress as it kind of gets closer. And I know at this point, everyone's probably thinking, well, that's, what does this have to do with manifesting my specific person? And I will say, no matter what you're dealing with, no matter what you're doing, no matter what your manifestation is, we will actually get slight cold defeat towards what it is that we want. And it's an aspect I always see, or not always, no, I guess I would say always, I always see in every single one of my coaching sessions, and it's something if we can kind of look at and kind of maneuver around, we're going to see our manifestation happen just like that. It's literally as easy as that. But the cold feet is whenever we're in a state, so kind of diving further into the law of assumption, when we're in a state, our body wants to remain there. So we can only have one state at any given time per, for a particular thing. Like two states cannot coexist at the same time. So if we're in the state of feeling single, our body right now, if we're comfortable in that, because obviously we're all here, marry your belief, marry your specific person. So we may currently be in the belief that we are single and we want to move into the belief that we are married to our specific person. So in this way, those two beliefs can't be expressed at the same time. You can't feel as if you're single and feel as if you are married at the same time. So in this way though, and it actually works out to our benefit when we are in the in the state, so that's the assumption as if you already have it, as we get or want to change a state, we our body kind of gets a little weird sometimes. And it's to really make this as easy to understand as possible. Think about if you had a new job opportunity that was kind of kind of unknown, like this new job could lead to your dream job. How easy would it be for you to quit your current job as it is right now? And if your current job is something very comfortable, very easy for you, you'll be like, I don't know, I really want this new job, but in this current job, I'm very comfortable. I know I can make the money I want. What if this new job is not as fun as I thought it would be, doesn't lead me to where I want to go? And that's how our mind thinks about moving states from being single to being married. And I know this sounds crazy to think that we actually internally might kind of resist this essence of moving into a marriage. But I would probably say anyone even kind of getting married is going to have this idea of like, is this actually what I want? But that's just our mind trying to help us out. So don't feel bad. Don't feel like you're doing something wrong if you are in this state or feeling of, I don't know if I want to change or I don't know if I want to move into this. Um, because I know we feel 100% like we do, but sometimes our internal state wants to stop us. Think again back to that metaphor of your job. Would you leave your job if you were making, let's say you're making $100,000 a year now, would you leave that job for the potential to make a million? And you'd be like, I'd really want to, but what if I don't? And that's what your mind kind of thinks as well. So we want to kind of think about what sort of ideas or doubts kind of come along with this cold feet. Because truly, our life, and I know it's funny, I'm preparing you guys for massive change because I need to prepare you guys for marrying your specific person. But that is going to be potentially a massive shift in who you are and what you do, how you feel, how you behave, your actions, shifting into a married state is going to be a massive shift in almost everything that you are. So some things can kind of come up when it comes to manifesting. Some fears, some doubts, some change, some feelings of worthiness, right? All of these are actually going to make an impact. And if I were to actually state or ask you guys, what sort of fears and worries and doubts would you have when you are manifesting or right now that you have towards manifesting your specific person, this is going to be under that concept of the cold feet, 
right? Having doubts, having fears, saying I can't do it because of fill in the blank, that's a cold feet sort of idea, right? Think of someone who's about to get married and is actually having the cold feet. They would be saying the same bizarre, crazy things. And if that was your best friend getting married to the person of their dreams, you would be like, you're talking nonsense. This doesn't make sense. And this is what I want to talk to you guys about your doubts and your fears and your anxieties and your worries and all that. Because it's just going to be our mind attempting to keep us in this same state. And as I kind of titled this section, Cold Feet versus Marriage, I'm going to basically we're going to dive into what it feels, means, and what it actually is to be in the state of feeling single and kind of not marrying our belief and the state of marrying the belief and totally eloping. I'm trying to think of, I was trying to think of a word. I think it's eloping, eloping with that marriage belief, eloping with that belief, being faithful to that belief. And we'll, we'll dive into it like a hundred, a hundred percent. But we do need to kind of identify what these two states are so we can easily avoid one and easily go into the other one. And a lot of times I would always say in almost all of my coaching session, coaching sessions, we need to identify what it is that we want. And this is a metaphor I probably use in every single seminar ever, all my coaching sessions, probably all my videos because I love it so much. Always remember that your subconscious mind wants to bring you what you want. You're the power and it really your reality, everything and everyone in it wants to bring you exactly what it is that you want. So if we don't know exactly what that is, it's like getting into an Uber and they're like, what address do you want to go to? And I'm sure you guys have heard me say this before because it's so such an important idea. It's getting into that Uber. They're going, where do you want to go? And you're like, ah, north. I want to go north. That's what it sounds like to our subconscious mind when we don't know the exact details. And sometimes too, and this is a technique I would always try out if you do have a hard time actually diving into, okay, what did it, what do I want? What it is that I want? Because if you think about marriage with your specific person, I would say, well, when are you getting married? Where are you getting married at? What's your wedding like? Where is it at? Are there flowers? Like what flowers, what cake, what's happening at your wedding? Where's your honeymoon? How many kids do you want to have? What kind of house do you have? Like there's a million questions and the more details you get on it, the better it is. But you could be like, that's kind of hard to do, right? It's kind of hard to get into these details. Like, I don't know. Maybe I don't know what I want. Really good way, and it's kind of this aspect that we're doing, write down what you don't want and then put the opposite of that on what it is that you want. And you'll really quickly know and identify exactly where we want to go. In this kind of technique or idea, it's a little different in that at first we want to identify our doubts, as you can see up on here. We want to identify what doubts we have in order to know what state, so what feeling and assumption we're going to avoid and move out of, okay? And once we can identify where we don't want to go, we can also identify where we do want to go, and we're going to kind of switch it around. Something really, really awesome about writing your doubts down as well is they look bizarre, right? I've had in so many coaching sessions, people tell me the craziest doubts. I mean, some don't seem as crazy, like the idea of like a long distance or a third party, but I've heard and had people write down and mention so many doubts, like even, which I don't think I technically put in, won't be in the recording, but remember that success story I told you guys about earlier where the individual was, they were long distance, no contact. And we met for a half hour video call. And in that, again, they had no contact, nothing. They told me a bunch of doubts that they had, right? That maybe there's a third party. How can they see me? Because it's, or how are they going to change, feel and assume, and how are we going to get married? And how are we going to do this? And how are we going to do that? 
because of long distance or we're not in communication. Like all of those are doubts, but those doubts are just a state. And like I mentioned, it was, I believe it was the next day. Yeah, I received that the success and the movement, that bridge of incidents, which a bridge of incidents is the path it takes for you to get to your manifestation. They mentioned their specific person requested to follow them on Instagram, who again, before they were completely no contact. And so that's the difference of when we look at our doubts and we can basically tell them, get out of here. I don't need you. There's nothing about doubts that is stopping you. We're going to push those away and see a different reality begin to actually happen and then take place. So what I would want you guys to do, and I wouldn't, you don't have to do it right now, but after this, I, when I send you this workbook, I want you to write it down. And I do have examples for you guys, but right now you guys probably have some doubts in your mind that are happening and whatever doubts you kind of have, uh, you can send them over. Just, you can write them in the chat if you guys want to as well. Like what doubts are plaguing you at this current moment? Is it maybe a third party? Is it maybe distance? Are you feeling not good enough? Things like that. Again, you can put them in the chat if there's something really kind of on your mind. And two later, there's this aspect of reframing where a lot of these doubts can actually be the reason that we get to what we want. Like no matter what it is, sometimes distance, because a lot of people put like distance or um, – I was trying to think of a different word to describe it, but basically long distance or not in communication as being a problem and kind of pushing us away. But in that way, distance can actually create attraction. And then Ronnie in the chat put basically not feeling good enough because really think about any aspect about your physical appearance that you feel is kind of weighing you down. If we think about that. Who is saying that you, to be loved, have to fulfill anything in that way? And just a little extra thing I want to definitely mention, especially during this time of doubt, remember that your specific person likes you for her, who you are, right? It's all about a state and an assumption. And when we try to be something massively different that we feel our specific person's going to like... When we do that, we actually become less of ourselves and more of something else. So in this way, if there is, if physical, something physical about you is holding you back and you feel like you want to change that, I would change it. But if you like that thing about you, that's okay. Like you, I guarantee you, your specific person likes you for who you are and what you want to do, not what you think they want or what you think they want you to do. I can't tell you how many times in coaching sessions, probably, no, probably 100% of every single coaching session I've ever had, people think they need to kind of, because we do need to change internally, but we feel as if we need to change something external about us or become or do something we feel our specific person likes in order to get them. But remember, it's your assumption. And the easiest thing I want you guys to think about anytime you have this worry is think of there are so many celebrities that are not the most attractive, right? We we all know some celebrities and but you're like, they're so attract like they're not like physically attractive, but they're so attractive as who they are. And that's because it's all about your internal state. And I literally guarantee you, I don't care what the circumstances, what doubt it is, physical appearance, like distance, third parties, when you have the confidence and you have the knowing and the assumption that you already have what you want, you will see your reality change. Like think of a time that you felt really confident and how did people react or interact with you in your rea reality? And Ronnie's saying in the chat, wow. So hopefully this is like mind blowing information. I mean, it really should be. It's funny because it's almost so simple. And when we hear this, it's probably something we kind of knew already, right? Inherently, when you hear this, I'm sure a lot of the stuff I tell you 
is something we inherently knew, but we didn't know that we already know because really that is a, you already have all of your, like think of law of assumption. You already have the ability and access to unlimited knowledge, information, and any manifestation you could ever imagine right here and right now. So after this, I really want you guys again to think about what doubts you have because and then Ronnie's writing, is mind blowing because society has taught me to be ashamed of myself. Yeah, it's, this is, we, and I seen something, it was kind of, which I feel like it has to do with manifestation and kind of realizing or putting too much effort or energy on our external reality. I saw something, I don't know how true it is. They put like a group of either ticks or termites in like a jar and they put the lid on. And then over time, if you keep the lid on, they'll jump. But if you take the lid off, they'll only jump as high as the lid was. And that's kind of, I don't know if that makes sense, but basically because we they felt this limitation, they never jumped higher than that. And that's us and our reality. But remember, your own limitation is just within yourself. And these doubts are our limitation that we're setting on ourselves. Because when I ask you, who says you have to be in close proximity to be loved? Who said you have to be attractive to be loved? Who said you have to be smart to be loved? Who said you have to be desirable to be loved? Like there's all these things or like who says you have to like any sort of your doubt, who says you have to insert doubt here to be loved? And you would say, oh, it's actually just ourselves that are thinking that. So when you write down these doubts, you're basically going to, and it'll make sense in a little bit, you're basically going to illustrate a state that you've been in that just reiterates and gives ourselves this feeling of being single and not married to our specific person. And I did have some examples, which we did, I was hoping you guys would kind of like chat a little bit more, but that's okay. If you guys are still like, oh my gosh, like really kind of getting, sounds like it's a little mind blowing information for you guys, which is awesome. I love that. So hopefully it's going to make this impact on you. So here's just some doubts that we could have. So maybe not feeling good enough. That's a really good one. Um, being long distance past events is a really, really good one especially if you're marrying the belief, marrying the specific person whom you've been with before, that's going to be a massive one. And I can't tell you how in the past I've went through that same sort of thing. I've gone through all of these a hundred percent. And that's why I feel like I'm able to help you guys not make the same kind of mistakes in this way, because I've been through them. So I can help you guys not go through them. Uh, and you guys can live and have this awesome, uh, awesome marriage with you and your specific person. We do have a couple kind of questions I think do relate to this. Uh, so third party, third party means someone who you feel is in competition with you. That's third party. So when I mention third party down here, hopefully you guys can see my mouse. I'm meaning like competition. A third party is someone who you feel is in your way. So maybe if your specific person had an ex that they were with or something like that, that would be the aspect of a third party. Uh, Veronica wrote negative assumptions about our SP causing doubt. Absolutely. So all of these are doubts that we can have with our manifestation. But remember, after you write all those out, you're basically knowing what we don't want to do. And it's really, really good. And you look like you guys are heart in that. So I'm glad you guys are really, really liking these ideas. And, but when we know what not to do, we know exactly where we want to go. Like even in the essence, which I, I don't want to specifically include it in this seminar, but when, when you guys are writing down exactly what you want, if you're ever stuck, like I mentioned earlier, write down what you don't want and then write the opposite of that. And you'll know exactly where to go. But you might be also thinking, well, Kyle, why are we looking at what we don't want? Doesn't that seem like it's kind of not very good? Where's the other aspect of this? But the other aspect of this is regardless of whatever doubt it is, manifestation, and you've 
definitely heard this before, or if you're hearing it for the first time, I'm glad I included this in here because this is really, really important and I think really illustrates the aspect of manifestation. Manifestation is like planting a seed. And when you plant a seed, that's it. You did it. It's done. Let's say you planted the seed of these flowers. Even if you had doubt, what do you do? It doesn't matter. You can kind of doubt, think kind of negative all you want about the seed, but if you planted the seed and you know it's going to grow, that's that. So never feel worried about your anxieties, fears, things like that. But as soon as we write them down, it is going to give you kind of a release from them because we will then know them and see them and know kind of where we don't want to kind of If we find ourselves in that state, we'll know, oh, I'm actually in the state of cold feet rather than the state of marriage. So planting the seed is so powerful. Once you assume the state, you've planted the seed. It doesn't matter the doubts. You don't have to worry about any doubts in your reality because you planted the seed and that's that. You can continue in the assumption and everything's going to be perfect. As I mentioned previously, We do need the other side of this coin. So in this case, we might be like this individual on here. We're constantly, there's two different people within us at any given time. And as we know, we are going to reveal or exhibit one of them because two states cannot occupy the same place at the same time. So we are either in this state of cold feet So that's the question mark version of us where we're like, I don't know. We're thinking about the doubts. That's a state that we did just identify. And so we know. And that individual, that state lives within us right now at this very moment. But also remember the state and version of ourselves that is married in that perfect marriage relationship when that one the version of us that is married to our belief also exists within us so as well as kind of writing out the doubts when it comes to us in our manifestation we also want to get in the opposite as well so what i want you guys to write down when it comes to your manifestation is what beliefs would you have, and you guys can write it in the chat, had you, were you the version of yourself that was married to your belief, okay? What would you have within? What kind of beliefs would you feel loved, desired? In my, I do have examples of this as well. So if you guys were kind of, you know, kind of stuck or not really thinking of it, then I'll I'll give you guys examples. But we just want to identify that state as much as we identify any of the other ones. And then we know exactly where we want to go rather than where we don't want to go. And when we know that, again, identify these two states, it makes it so much easier. You, You would not believe how quick and easy, you're going to be able to assume the state as we know, or if, as long as we know where to go and how to get there. Like, remember the example earlier of the the Uber driver, when we know our address and really think about the concept of Ubering or in a taxi, they won't even let you get in the car if you don't know the address. So it's, we're going to continuously reiterate and stay in the same place until we know exactly where to go. So What beliefs do you guys think? Maybe you guys, you guys don't have to write it in the chat if you don't want to, but think about what you would feel, think, kind of the opposite of the doubts, and you can go back, remember that technique that I mentioned, you can go back to these doubts and write the kind of opposite of these if you really wanted to, right? And I mean, because long distance technically doesn't, you don't have to be in close proximity. Obviously, probably if you're married, you're going to want to be that, but you, these totally just write the complete opposite. Basically the opposite of all your circumstances. Those are probably all the beliefs that we would have. We had a couple of comments um, too. We had some right negative assumptions about our, oh, I already read that one. Cold feet and wanting to stay comfortable is so on point. How to work through upper limit problems when it's felt in the body. Just work through the doubts. So remember, everything is a product of your assumptions and your beliefs. 
Oh, let me go there. So when we, when we are feeling this upper limit problem, it's only because we're identifying with the state. And I heard something that I really, really liked and loved. And because it's at the very basis, at the very end, if you feel like you still can't get out of this, I had this individual, and this wasn't necessarily a manifestation kind of video or podcast, but it has such a massive effect on manifestation. Because two things and ideas in manifestation that are really important are patience and persistence. And so even if you're feeling doubt, you're having the upper limit beliefs and problems, what's stopping you from still just doing it, right? Just do it with the anxiety. Do it with the worry because assumptions are not worries and not anxieties. And if you know the state that you are married to your specific person in and you know how to get there, how to feel ideas, you can persist in that regardless of how you're feeling because your body, as I mentioned, wants to keep you in a comfortable state. And think of any habit that you begin. It feels very odd and very weird. And if it started feeling weird, like you started reaching these upper limit problems, you wouldn't say, oh, I want to start working out. So, well, this is actually what usually happens. If we wanted to start running in the, run in the morning every single day, it's going to feel really tiring, really odd. We're going to wake up exhausted. Oh my God, it's 5.30. I can't do this, right? This is ridiculous. Why am I doing this to myself? We're going to feel really weird because we're moving and transitioning a state. But, and you guys have examples of this all over your life, Neville Goddard always says, Imagination follows habit. What we habitually do, our mind, body, and assumptions automatically follow. And I guarantee you, let's say you did want to wake up at 5.30 every morning and go for a run. When you do that, you will, I guarantee you this because this will become a habit, you will at some point wake up in the future and be excited to wake up and run at 5.30 in the morning. But that is the point and the total implication of when we're persisting in a state. The more we persist in it, the more we habitualize in it, and the more we are going to see that happen in our reality right here and right now. So even if you are feeling that resistance, again, even if you're like, oh my gosh, thinking this way, um, viewing things in this way, I don't know how to get around it. Persisting in it is going to create it in the exact same way that, again, if you wanted to wake up at 5.30 a.m. and run every day, you would end up in there. And we have another kind of question or maybe a comment that says, I always lay in bed imagining that my husband is next to me comforting comforting me when I had a bad day. I also watch YouTube of New York City Christmas light shows and thinking of being there with him in person. I love that. That is a perfect representation and a perfect visualization. You can even journal that or just, you know, imagine it of your end state marrying the belief. So when you think about that, and this is kind of a really good state because we wrote that in there. This is an idea, someone, a visualization someone had. What beliefs do you have in that in that way. So think of yourself, New York City Christmas light show. What beliefs does that version of you have? And that's going to really intensely identify that state and that version of you. And we do kind of, I'm going to keep going because I know I get really hyped up on these ideas. So to make sure they all make sense. So let me know if they don't make sense. I'm going to move on kind of the next section because we do have a, a little more. And I think you guys are really, really going to like what I'm going to have you do at the very end. It's kind of like homework for this. But here are some beliefs that you might have. And you can see there's one one of those on there that's on there twice because it's so important. So maybe, and then these are I am statements, but it could be anything you want. So you probably feel loved. You would, I, you would say, I am desired. I am heard. I am seen. I am pursued. I am loved. Again, I put that on there twice because that's so important. You would feel the love in the air no matter what. And so we need to, again, marry this belief. We need to be so persistent and consistent with these ideas because we're married to it. If you were married to someone, wouldn't you be devoted to them every single day? Wouldn't you follow through? Wouldn't you always um, 
wouldn't you always try to support that concept and ignore everything else? And you'd be like, well, absolutely, 100%. And so the next kind of idea that's really going to institute this concept of marrying the belief is, is going to be kind of a fun one. I'm going to ask you guys a question about it. Being faithful. Think of literally a concept. Like I know I talked about it a lot at the beginning, but think of what beliefs you're married to right now. What beliefs are you so faithful in? It could be a negative one. It could be that I'm not good enough. That could be a belief that we're faithful and we're devoted to. We refuse anything outside of us except that belief. Or maybe our belief is that we're always we're always positive. We're always someone who can listen. We're always nice. We're always kind. What beliefs are you married to? And look at how faithful you are to them. Like if I told you, I used the example of your name at the beginning. We're going to use this one again. Imagine if I told you guys that your name wasn't your name. You are so faithful to the idea that your name is your name, that you would defend it forever, right? You would defend it. You would support it no matter what. You would back up that idea. And so that's what we want to do with our manifestation or whatever it is that you want. So the belief of being married to your specific person, we want to marry that belief and that's how we're going to marry our specific person in the same way that your name is going to stay your name forever as long as you are faithful to it. There is no kind of cheating unfaithfulness on that. But when you guys think of being faithful, Kind of what does that look like to you when it comes to manifestation? As I previously mentioned, that's always supporting it, things like that. I do have examples, so don't worry. It could be techniques as well. But when we are faithful to an idea, we follow through with it no matter what. And I know I'm going to just give you guys the examples because I know you probably have stuff to think about. If you are watching this after, you can pause this to kind of think more about it. But you might be like, what? I don't know what that means. Obviously, supporting it. But here are some examples of being faithful to this idea. Could be, remember, affirming for it. That is being faithful. That is supporting that idea. Visualizing it, like someone wrote in the comments in the chat. That is a really good visualization that keeps us faithful in the idea of being married. Positive self-talk towards what it is that we want. That's being faithful in the belief of us being with our specific person. Preparing. So do you prepare for being single or do you prepare for the opposite? Now, as you know, manifestation technically always begins and ends within us, but sometimes we can find things outside of us kind of support that. So if you find, and because this is what I've always found, the larger that your life will change when it comes to manifesting or creating some change in your life, like manifesting your specific person, manifesting a house, a new car, things like that, the larger or the larger amount that your life will change, the stronger that upper limit problem, okay, of like not of having a hard time being consistent with that version or state of ourselves. And I'll give you an example because if, how would we feel, or I'll get, yeah, this is, I think this is a good example. How would you feel, how do you feel waking up in the morning today? You woke up probably in your bed, right? Felt very good, felt very confident, awesome. Then you went and you probably brushed your teeth or you ate breakfast, maybe you showered, maybe you went for your run, whatever it was, and it was all very natural, comfortable to you. So that's something that's going to be supported by you and your belief system. But let's say I snap my fingers. You wake up in a bed you've never seen before. You're in a house you've never seen before. Maybe you're in a different country, in a different state. It looks totally different. There's no toothbrush, no shower that looks normal. Everything's different. Now how do you feel? And you're going to say uncomfortable, anxiety, worry, fear, all you'd be like, well, one, you'd be like, where am I? Am I, was I kidnapped? Like, right. Those are going to be the thoughts that you're going to have. And so when we prepare and get ready for this thing coming into a reality, because how do you know you would feel really uncomfortable, but what if I snapped my fingers and you woke up 
in the house that you were and your specific person are living in after being married, right? And you're like, you'd still feel really uncomfortable because you wouldn't have seen that thing ever before. And I would have just granted your wish right then and there, but we would be in a fearful state because maybe your specific person woke, they go for a run in the morning. So you woke up not next to them. Or maybe you do wake up next to them. How that would almost be kind of a little bit also a little scary as well. You're like, I'm not comfortable with this. You'd be, you'd probably be worried and fearful about how you looked or if you like smelt weird, like, right. You'd have all these fears and worries and anxieties. So as someone commented too, if you snapped your fingers and I was married, I would be forever grateful. So it is, it is like that though. But think of how, if you woke up tomorrow after this, and I know everybody would be thankful after the fact, but if you woke up tomorrow in a very weird house and it was you in the future at whatever point in time that you are married to your specific person, you would feel, li- you would re- freak out. You'd wake up freaking out until you remember, remembered or found out that it was you and your specific person in your house. And then you would get calm and you'd relax. You'd be like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. But you still would feel very odd and weird and it would be new. So again, and this is just like a little added aspect. I'll probably... I'll probably go further into this in another video or later because I think it's such a good idea. But the further, the more your life would change had you already received what you want, the more of an upper limit problem you're going to have when it comes to manifesting. It's going to feel really weird. But the closer, so think of it in this way. This might be a better way of thinking about it. Think of yourself as you are. And think of the version of you that's in your end state. The closer these are together, the less anxiety, worry, fear you're going to have and the easier it's going to manifest because, again, we're assuming that state or belief. And the further we are, the more weird, uncomfortable it's going to be in order to do that. Like if – now, I think that's that's good on this subject. So we are totally faithful – to our desire. I'm like, oh my God, we talked so much. I almost forgot what we were even talking about right now. Be faithful to our desire. We would always, always support it. Always support the idea. We never catch ourselves saying, is my name actually, I never find myself, is my name actually Kyle? Is it? I never find myself to that because I'm always faithful to the idea that that's my name and that's the level of faithfulness. When you marry something, because you've married this belief of your name, so now we just need to marry that same thing when it comes to our specific person and our manifestation. But on the opposite end, because remember, if we know where we want to go, we know where we don't want to go, we know a perfect path and we've basically told our little Uber driver of our subconscious mind that's taking us to our manifestation, exactly how to get there. What does it look like to be unfaithful to your desire? And you're going to say kind of the opposite of everything that we mentioned, right? And even if we take a look back at those again, if we're affirming, visualizing, having positive self-talk, preparing, having gratitude, journaling, we're kind of doing the opposite. So again, if you do take time by yourself or kind of after this to, or if you're watching this after, you can pause here and just write this down because it really is good to write these things out. Even if you rewrite exactly what I wrote, you're going to find that, it, it kind of sticks with you a little bit better or a lot of it better actually. But your ideas are things in which you are being unfaithful to your desire. And so this would be neglecting our daily practice. So think of if back to the example of waking up at 5.30 a.m. to run every day. If we wanted to be faithful to that and marry that, we would support it and we would do it, right? And we would affirm and we'd think and we'd th- basically imagine ourselves as a, a runner, Right. But instead, if we weren't, we wouldn't show up there, right? That's unfaithfulness. That's being unfaithful to that marriage. And think of how you would react if you were literally married to someone. Being unfaithful would be basically, and as Neville Goddard and Joseph Murphy would say, that would be a sin, right? That's a sin. And sin, don't think of sin as being, I'm bad, I'm a horrible person. Sin means missing the mark. So sin means not following through with what it is that you want. So it's not like, you're 
going to someplace really, really bad by doing this. Because remember, your assumptions are what's hardening, hardening into fact around you. But sinning just means missing the mark. So all of these in the eyes, if you guys have never, I'm sure you guys have heard of Neville Goddard and Joseph Murphy, but I always like to kind of support it in a lot of my seminars. If you do have time, read a book, read some lectures, watch some lectures of them it's going to blow your mind and change your reality because I absolutely love Neville Goddard and Joseph Murphy. They're kind of how I kind of got my way or how I kind of found manifestation in the law of assumption. And all my teachings are basically on this idea. But sinning would be all of these, which you would be sinning in the aspect if you were unfaithful in a relationship in this way, right? In the same way, if you were neglecting daily practices, you weren't supporting them, helping them, anything like that, ignoring positive signs, ignoring negative self-talk, or I mean not ignoring, but having negative self-talk, having doubt or desperation, looking for external validation. That is being unfaithful to your idea because if you're married, you never look for external validation for beliefs you are married to, right? Think of your name again. Think of your address. You are not looking for external validation in that. Um, Having doubt or desperation, right? All of these things are being unfaithful to that idea. And if we are marrying this idea, and I will tell you, marrying your idea is a million, an infinite amount more important than marrying your specific person in your 3D. Marrying the belief you must do in order to marry your specific person in your 3D. So that's what we want to do right here and right now. Kind of just ask a little support on the aspect of ignoring positive signs. Remember that success story I told you about the person who we met up for the video call. We're in no contact, not together, and then ended up following them on uh, Instagram. Yeah, Instagram. I was trying to think of what it was because I have it right here too. It's funny. I can just look right in front of me because I have the screenshot of their little success story they sent me. They were seeing positive signs and they were supporting it. They actually, because what did they say exactly? Basically, they're talking to an individual who had a boyfriend and their boyfriend was the same exact job that their specific person is. And you might be like, well, what does that mean? Is that even a sign? Is that support? Yes, that is a support. That's Bridge of, that's birds before land. I almost said the bridge of events, which it is technically too, but that would be birds before land getting us ready, basically seeing our mind and body morph or get ready for that sort of thing. So if this, if you guys did have any questions, let me know, but I'm going to, cause I'm going to have two more things for you guys to specifically do to remember everything we talked about. Remember too, you will have access to this full lecture and this workbook. So you can always go back to it. So always, always remember that. But this next portion is we need to have a marriage ceremony with this idea. So whatever it is that you want, so whatever belief it is that you want, you can write it down. But what I'm going to have you do, and this is actually, I've heard people do this before, but it's going to be specifically with this belief. And it's not going to be with our specific person. It's with this belief because the belief and assumption is more important than anything because I had... And if you guys are like, I don't know about that, I feel like marrying my specific person is a little more important, think about it in this way. If you couldn't believe you could do something, would you ever do it? And you would say, well, no, right? I have to believe it. That's where everything starts off with. And if you had two individuals in front of you that you wanted to maybe invest in or something like that or wanted to help you with something, would you want the one who knew they could do it but didn't believe or the one that believed and didn't know they could do it, right? You'd say the belief, the belief is the, and I might've made that sound really confusing. Sorry about that. It'd be the belief. If someone, if you had two individuals, one believed you could, one believed you couldn't, nothing else would matter because the one who believed you couldn't would, it would just never, ever work out. They would constantly, they would be unfaithful to the belief the whole time. So we need to perform our marriage ceremony. So what I want you guys to do And it can be however you want, in whatever way you want. And it doesn't have to be specifically like this. But I want you guys to get a ring. And you are having this ring, as you can see right here. You're going to wear it all the time. And instead of thinking, because usually this technique, and you've maybe even heard this, maybe even tried this before, 
In this technique, you are not putting this ring to remember you're married to your specific person because I've had people do that and it works fantastic, but this is going to work a lot better than that because we do want to assume as if we already have it, but sometimes that is a little hard to believe for some of us, right? Like the aspect of, because someone even made a comment of it, of like, that would be the best thing ever if you snap your fingers and you were married tomorrow. Most of us would want to believe that, but we're probably, because we can, you 100% could snap your fingers, make anything happen, but we're probably like, I'm not really so sure I believe tomorrow my specific person's going to show up and ask me to marry them, or we might not even like that, right? We may want to hang out, have dates, right? Go through the whole process. We wouldn't just want to skip to the end, right? But, you know, your desire is yours, whatever you want. But when you put this ring on, so find a ring, it could be a bracelet, it has to be something to tell you, you are married and faithful to something now. You are now married to this belief. And I have a little kind of wedding vow that I want you guys to do. You can make it whatever you want. You can create your own. You can reword it, whatever it is. But whatever, you will have a wedding vow and you have a little ceremony. Maybe even if you have manifestation friends, they can come with you on it. You are marrying the belief that you and your specific person are together. But remember again, and I can't tell you how important this is, you're marrying the belief, not your specific person. Because when we marry our specific person, we can have doubts and fears and anxieties that arise. I've seen this happen before. But instead, marry the belief. You're remaining faithful to the belief because the belief is what's going to bring us there. And does hopefully that, everyone, that makes sense, right? Because the belief is going to lead to it manifesting outside of you. But if we are trying to, and you can assume as if you're married to your specific person if you want to, but I have found if we do feel something is really not true, or really difficult, or we feel it's hard to achieve, we can have anxieties kind of pop up. Like if someone came up to you, like, you know, reframing, right? Revision. If someone came up to us and said, if our SP says, I, hey, what's up? Like, I don't know, says something not so positive. I was going to use an example, but I don't really want to use an example. Let's say your SP says something not so positive. And you're like, they didn't say that. They actually said this. Sometimes that works really well. But sometimes that gets into a concept called disassociation, where it just causes us more anxiety. And I'm sure I've felt that before. I'm sure everyone in here has felt this before. I've heard people in coaching sessions feel this before. So we are specifically, and you don't have to believe this to have it work, marry the belief instead of, so the thought is I'm marrying the belief that I'm with my specific person not I'm marrying my specific person. And it will have such a ma- such a different and huge effect on you. I literally am so excited for you guys to try this. But here's the wedding vow. So it could be a ring. It could be a bracelet. It could be whatever it is that you want. But so here's the wedding vow. And you're, there's a spot for you guys. And as you kind of noticed, when it has this like lighter background, those are things that you're going to do. So when you see the whole, the whole workbook, in its entirety, when I send it to you, you guys will see, like you'll notice that, okay, here's where I write those doubts, Here, here's where I write those beliefs, things like that. So here is where you're gonna write all those wedding vows. And I have an example, so you can use the one that I use or write your own, because I really, really like the one I wrote, but that's if you don't like it, that's okay. But so as we're kind of having this ceremony, coming together, marrying our belief, this is what I want you guys to repeat, but it can be whatever it is that you want. It is kind of, I don't want to say it's long, but it is something that you're going to go through. Um, we have chats. I love this idea. I know I love this idea and I'm so excited for you guys to try this out. As I mentioned at the beginning, when you guys are manifesting, I'm manifesting with you. So when we're coaching in this call, I am so devoted. Like your manifestation is my manifestation and I can just feel what you guys will feel going into this. And I am excited and it's okay if I'm more excited for you guys than you are. That's okay. But Here's our wedding vows. So you're going to state, I stand before the universe, my heart, and my soul's true desires. And pause for a moment. You guys can actually like, not like 
don't say it in here, but you can say it out loud while muted. It might be fun or in your head right now. It might be fun, but just do it with the ring that you have that you want to remember because it's going to be really important to do that. So I'll continue. I stand before the universe, my heart, and my soul's true desires. Today I pledge to wholeheartedly commit to the manifestation of true, deep, and lasting love in my life. Just as one promises to stand by a partner for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, I vow to remain steadfast in my belief through moments of doubt and through moments of hope that love is on its way to me. I promise to nurture this desire with the same dedication, love, and patient, patience one invests in a lifelong relationship. I will not let fleeting moments of impatience, fear, or external voices cloud my unwavering belief in the love that is destined for me. I vow to prepare my heart, my mind, and my life, making room for the love I seek, ensuring I am ready to give and receive love in its purest form. To the universe, I pledge to remain true to this belief, to act in ways that align with this love, and to always cherish and nourish the love once it manifests in my life. From this day forward, until my manifestation becomes my reality, I promise to trust the journey, to love myself as I wish to be loved, and to always remember this sacred commitment I make today. So that's it. Shoo, that was a long one, right? But that is a, you can make whatever vow you want. I really like this one. I took time into this one. So hopefully you guys liked it too. I'm going to see you guys hearten, hearten up the stream. So hopefully you guys really do like it. I like it. Make it however you want. Change it however you want. If you don't like that I wrote the word universe, you could say subconscious. You could say higher self. You could say God. Whatever it is that's going to help you with that. This is your wedding vow today to manifest and bring that thing to you. It's already here technically, but we need to marry that belief in its entirety. And when you marry a belief, you have fully committed to it. And again, unwavering as you've seen in the wedding vow. And that's why I want you guys, because vows are really, really powerful. Like I love the concept of psychology and you guys see, I always like to kind of like law of assumption states to assume as if you already have something. So I always like to use like psychological ideas to support it, but there's real power in making a vow. Like it is really, really powerful. And when you have a reminder of that, which is your ring, right? To this married to this idea, you are going to have massive, massive abundance and effects flow into your life easily, effortlessly. We got another message that says, my SP told me yesterday that he thought about it and doesn't see a future with me and thinks well of me, but not in a romantic way. How do I handle that? So actually that is still just a circumstance that is affecting us. I have had I seriously, like, I know this seems like in our reality, if I was experiencing this too, I would be having a lot of doubt. I have not had, well, I mean, maybe like 90, 99% of every person I've ever helped manifest a specific, no, probably a hundred. I'm just, yeah, it is a hundred. Every person that's ever manifested an SP in my coaching sessions or my seminars has had their specific person say something like that to them at some point or another. And again, it's just a circumstance. And even if your specific person is even saying, I know it sounds weird, but them even saying that is a positive sign because they are in, like, you don't, you don't need to say something that's kind of something you believe or know. So in this case, don't fight against this. We don't want to fight our reality. Marry the belief marry the belief that's going to be the most 
abundant and supportive way of actually getting to your end state. So never fight your reality. Never try to go against it. Always support the idea that you want. So literally doesn't matter. So in the easy, I love this idea and I feel like it changes people's perspectives like that. So I I've used it so many times. Imagine the version of you. So you're in this image, however, whoever you are, Imagine that version of you that is so irresistible to your specific person. Does it matter what they said in the past? Does it matter where they are? Does it matter what circumstances? Does it matter if there's a third party? You say, no, right? You're so, you're irresistible. That's the version of you. So no circumstance, as you become this version of you, nothing can impact the, the attraction. No circumstance can ever get in your way with you manifesting your specific person. So that's something I always want you guys to keep in mind. Remember, again, and being irresistible has nothing to do with something outside of you. It has everything to do with you, okay? So with that too, because I do have to hop off here because I have a uh, another call to kind of go on to. Thank you guys so much for stopping by today. Hopefully you guys really enjoyed this. I can't wait to hear about all of your successes too when it comes to the seminar. Feel free at any point in time, if you guys see signs, any sort of success that you have, I want you guys to reach out to me, send it to me. If it's, you see their name on a street address or if they text you, if they call you, if you guys hang out, if they ask you to marry them, I want to hear all of that at any point in time. Or if you had any questions, just remember to reach out. I'm going to send you an, an email with the PDF of this workbook. So feel free to reply to that with your successes or your questions or your worries, or if you wanted to kind of work more closely together. Um, absolutely. I'm always down for that. I love that. Uh, especially too, if it's like, if you wanted to work through phone or video coaching, that's my favorite but any way possible to help you manifest your specific person, I'm always down to do. So definitely let me know all of that. Again, thank you guys so much for stopping by today. Have a great rest of your day. Remember, send me those success stories. I love, love, love to see you guys successful, and I'm always here to cheer you on every step of the way. Even if it's something you think is really small, let me cheer you on because I love to hear your guys' success with everything that happens. So don't hesitate that or don't hesitate if you did have any questions about what we talked about. Again, immediately following this, I'm going to email you guys all the PDF. So this PDF that you've seen, I still have to upload this specific lecture to or online and then I just got to edit it and upload it and then I'll send you a new PDF with the link to this lecture, okay? Again, thank you guys so much for stopping by today. Feel free, look out for that email. If you don't see it immediately, maybe check your spam folder because uh, sometimes it goes in there. But thanks again, you guys, so much for stopping by today. Hopefully you guys really enjoyed that workshop. I had an absolute blast in making it. Now you know exactly what I mean when I say marry your belief and you'll marry your specific person. If you did have any questions or anything like that about the seminar, anything, you can always reach out to me at kyleaugustcoaching.com or also tomorrow, again, I'll be live for all my members. So if you did want to ask me any questions about it, feel free to hop in there. Again, just use the link in the description to become a member and I'd be happy to meet with you every single week and hear all of your amazing successes. Thank you guys so much for stopping by today. Again, I think... Really make sure to use everything I talked about in that workshop because it can change your reality. But seriously, if you, once you get your success to reach out to me, I would absolutely love to hear. Again, or if you're feeling worried, fearful, anything, I'm here to support you every single step of the way. Thank you guys so much for stopping by today and I'll see you in the next video tomorrow.